Hello guys, tune you about again. Well, this week we're going to do a um, review of uh, Gimmick Special Edition. This is the PC one. Pretty sure it's out on it's out on Switch. I'm not sure if it's out on PlayStation. It might be. Um, I say I I did have this uh, as a review code, so I'll get that out of the way. So um, there was no there was no stipulation for any type of reviews. Basically, I say whatever I want about it. So which is what I'm going to do. Um, so basically, Gimmick Gimmick is a classic NES platform game. Uh, momentum based platform game so basically you know you, you can go faster on slopes and things like that so that he's got really tight controls as well I'm not particularly very good at it so you're not gonna see some good gameplay here at all so the reason I've taken like about a week to review is I needed time to play it because uh, I've not really played the NES one much I've only had a couple of goes on it uh, so I wanted to play it for some time really to give it sort of my, my sort of uh, view on it so as we, we'll run through the main menus, these are the ones you get when you load up. There's two languages, you've got English and Japanese, pretty simple. Uh, graphic options, there's not a lot in the graphic options. You've basically got your standard borderless, you've got um, your inner window, your full screen, and you can go up to resolutions 4K, maybe above, I'm not sure. Works 4K on my other PC. Um, and then you've got a V-Sync option on or off. Uh, if you put it on, you will probably get a frame or two of uh, input lag because that's how V-Sync works. So we'll just leave it as it is. Um, your keyboard options. So basically, you can, I think, not sure if you can change any of this stuff, but I, I'm not going to mess with any of the keyboard stuff because I'm not going to play on the keyboard. So there's your keyboard options anyway. Uh, this shows you the credits to everyone involved in the, the original game and uh, people involved in the uh, Special Edition Remake. In the extra mode, you get um, artwork from the boxes. So basically, you get uh, posters and you go through and you get the um, booklets for the different versions of the game. I think they added a Nordic version of the game, so you could have a look at that. And you can just flick through them and they spin through the different types of artwork. You can just go back. I think eventually it will go through all the, the artwork on you. Shows you the cartridges, and like I said, they're not the highest quality pictures in the world, but they, they, you know, they do the job. They're pretty nice. You can see the cartridges. You can see like these ones. You can say that's quite a nice high res picture, but this one's a little bit low res. And to be honest, it does look like they cut out of a magazine or something. But you know, you get the idea of it. So you can have a look at what the original cartridges and stuff if you've never seen the original cartridge. And there's man the different types of manuals and stuff like that going on. So that's a little Easter egg. Um, there is achievements in this game as well. Uh, as you can see, I've got absolutely none of them. But uh, you never know, perhaps I will. Uh, say, if you're like a cheer, I'm not really bothered achievements personally myself, but I know people love achievements. But they're there if you want them. Achievements for different things. They can all get high points and get secrets and various other things. Which is quite nice. There's quite a few achievements to uh, go through. Get the true ending ones for there. Um, ranking mode. Uh, if you play in this in the um, speedrun mode, you can basically get the time rankings, which is quite nice. As you can see, Biko is uh, top. I was watching him streaming this, so so basically speedrunners are starting to use this version of stream. I don't know how many of them, but I know Biko is, and he, he popped up with the leaderboards basically with six minutes, which seems crazy. But obviously, he's very, I was watching him for a while. He's very good at it. And uh, so there's your, your level ranking one, I'm not sure which one that is. Oh, that's the true ending. So that's the normal ending rank mode, and that's the true ending rank mode. I think this game has got a lot of secrets you need to collect to get the true ending. I, I don't know what, personally, because I, I, like I said, I'm no expert on this game. So that's that. So when you start the game up, there's no other options, basically, on the front. Uh, it boots into this. This is, you can see it's normal mode on the left-hand side, and the game starts playing. I run through the options first. Um, you've got to continue. You've got quick saves. You can quick save it anywhere you want, but the only problem is there's only three quick save 
uh, slots. It would have been nice if there was more, maybe like, I know, 10 or something like that, or even more, to be honest, so you can practice parts of the game. But uh, you've got free, so it's better than nothing, but they are there if you need to use them. And you've got quick load, you can reset the game from here if you click the I, it resets your progress and everything. Um, you've got a mode select, so basically, as you can see, you've got the normal mode, which gives you just a normal game, and you get the features like the rewind feature and the quick save and everything. Uh, you've got a serious mode uh, where it you don't get those extra features and you've got a speedrun mode which we'll quickly go into on the speedrun mode you'll notice uh, it gives you your split times on the side and your overall time so when i was watching uh, Biko playing this you could you could see what he was improving uh, all the time so that's really nice for speedrunners and you don't have to use any overlays or anything you can just just play this as it is um, and there was a change option. Yes, yeah, so you can do a true ending, normal ending, and there's your speed run, and there's your, your times for the ball from, which is nice. So we'll go back to your box standard mode. And uh, then in the options, then you've got your overall volume, which is literally just your overall volume, nothing else. Uh, background on or off. Uh, wallpaper um, illustrations. So basically, there's, there's about five or six different wallpapers, whatever you want to use. So, I am going to... That's the standard one it comes to, which I quite like. But I'm going to use the blue one. Um, zoom. Uh, basically, the screen is in a box in uh, the aspect ratio. Uh, but I think it uses a one-to-one -one pixel square pixel ratio by the look of it. So, it's not... Um, like pixels on the original NES uh, weren't square. They were slightly wider. So, um, they're not exact perfect square pixels. But they were meant for CRTs. And, um, you know, LCDs, if you're playing on LCD, of course, uh, they are square pixels. So the game has been presented, I think, in a square pixel mode. Uh, don't quote me on that, but I think it is. Uh, so basically, you've got your, your original look and you've got your zoom look. So if I, if I go back to original, that gives you the box. I guess and I didn't actually go back to the other mode either, which I, I need to... I need to go back to the standard mode. So it runs the game in a square. As you can see, it's the perfect square, where it should really be a bit wider than it is taller. Um, it's not a biggie, but I can see if you play the NES one a lot, especially as a, as a kid, I may annoy you quite a bit. It would be nice if there was a mode to, do, to use a non-square pixel mode. Um, and then there's the zoomed, which basically just fits it to the screen. Uh, your controller... One thing I did notice, there's no there's, there's no controller config. All you can do is normal or rotate, and that just swaps your buttons around. So you're stuck, say you've got an Xbox pad, you're stuck with um, A and B, or PlayStation X and Zero, and then you can just swap them around the other way, which is a little bit of a shame because I use an arcade stick and it would have been really nice to have a, um, a controller config. I have asked them about adding the config and they've said they look into it but can't promise which is fair enough uh the other thing which straight away i noticed this it doesn't have any scan lines which is a massive shame because scan lines would have been lovely on this and i've also asked them can they add scan lines and they've said the same thing they look into it but they can't promise so hopefully maybe they'll do that in updates but yeah this would have been so nice for scan lines but unfortunately we ain't got them uh, your description features just tells you about stuff and the accessories and you re rewind, you can just turn them off if you want. So that's your your normal options. Uh, you've got the original manual. So it's just back to last screen when you can look through your manuals. And then back to title, which goes back to the uh, title screen. So we're going to cancel out. So now you're going to see some really bad gameplay. But yep, this is Mr. Gimmick. It's a pretty nice game, as you can see. So let's start this up. So you've got two options, pretty much just like the original one, is start and continue. So we're going to start a new game. I said the one thing I did want to check up is the music on this. Um, the NES one, I think, may have like an extra sound chip in the cartridge. I think some of the Sunsoft games did. Um, but I, I've checked it up against the Mister and stuff, and the music just sounds the same. So it's not missing any, any sort of um, bits of the music or anything. It, it sounds really good. So here's gimmick. Like I said, I, I'm I'm no good at this, but here we go. Here's gimmick. You can you can jump, and you can do tap jumping. You can high jumping. You can you basically I don't know why all the fire's on, but 
Why do I have the other one? Okay, that could be a problem. Why is it auto fire? That's weird. That's gone then. Well, I've never had that before. So, oh, I, there's a tiny bit of a glitch of auto fire then. So I've never, I've never seen that before, but I, I just managed to uh, do that. Anyway, so uh, he's got this little star thing which he jumps and uh, he can fire, and the star bounces off and kills enemies. Um, it is a little bit tricky to get this done right, but if you can, you if you time it right, like you watch the speedrunners play this, they do some amazing things with this uh, star, with jumping on it, and they can jump up. There's a secret above me where it is now. You can get up there off the star. I don't know how you do it though, but uh, yeah, you can jump on the star and you can you can use the star to ride around. I haven't quite got uh, the skill in doing that at the moment, but uh, yeah. As you can do, you can sit on it and uh, go about. I say, as this is a momentum-based platformer, there's lots of platforms and stuff like this to push you around. And if you scout off uh, the edges and like that, you basically start going faster. So if I go back down here, so gain speed, and then if you keep jumping, you can sort of keep your momentum going a bit. Get that going. They may hear me tapping because I'm playing on an arcade stick. So you get your momentum going so you can get faster and faster. So game, a lot of the game is, is going for the levels, is you know keeping that momentum going like I, I did not there. Like there's another example of it. You can jump up here. Like I said, when you watch the speedrunners play this, they, they zip through these levels and they, they use the star and everything to uh, bounce around and get up the higher higher um, sort of uh, levels and stuff, which is quite impressive. They will go for you. So the entire game is built on that, because as soon as I go on this uh, that slope, I start going down the slope fast. So there's lots of secrets everywhere to get if you want to try and get them. So, if I kill myself for you... There's a rewind function that's always there, so you can basically hold the button down and you can rewind back to basically almost any point in the game. I can rewind back to where I was. So the rewind function is really handy. You, <laughs> until you get used to this game, you will find yourself using the, the function a lot. I think, I, think it, I think it puts you off a little bit sometimes. So I'm going to kill myself for here anyway. So you can get up there, but I haven't quite worked out how to do it yet. It's very much like timing based, this game is as well. Like if you um, if you jump up there, you can uh, you can dodge the enemies. You can also jump on enemies as well. You don't get hit. There's only certain enemies in the game that can hit you when you jump on them. Like those little black bombs with the um, electric thing on the top. Um, I'm not sh I'm not sure exactly how many levels are on this game. I don't think there's that many, maybe about seven, something like that. But the there's two endings. You need to collect a lot of items really to get to the um the best ending. There's a good trick uh, I've watched speedrunners do here where they, they hold the star down and you'll see bombs dropping out here now. Uh they jump on the um star and then they uh Basically, uh, jump on the bomb and jump up and skip a lot of the level. I'm not going to attempt that because literally I'm going to die if I try it. I'd have to watch some videos and see how the hell they do it. It's a shame that this was only on the NES. It would have been really cool if this was on the Master System, but uh, nope, I didn't have an NES as a kid. They jump up these things really fast. The, the boss is basically over to the right. You can get over there. There's a secret that everyone goes for, which uh, I end up dying a lot if I try it. But we'll we'll try it just for the hell of it. I'll try and use the rewind, uh, rewind function and uh, see if I can get over there. So what I found is this guy. You can you can kill this guy by jumping on his head. I don't think I want to kill him. So. They do a really cool trick where they uh, 
jump on they pick up a bomb, jump on the cannon. Basically you've got items as well, so if you if you hold up and fire, you can use an item. Um, they jump on the cannonball and then drop that off, jump on it, and then get across that way. Ah, that's quite interesting. So basically you've got to time this to land on it. Oh, that was good timing. It's tricky to do, man. This game is all about momentum and timing. So the more you obviously the more you play it, the better you're gonna get at it. So I'll ride this back. That was one of the secrets. You don't have to get, go over there to get the secret, but I'm not sure whether it makes the boss a little bit easier. Right. Okay, so there's that over there. I don't think I can... Uh... Oh, I can get over there. Boss is over here. Found if he jumps over you sometimes. Same. That's the easiest way to hit him. I don't think he does it all the time, though. What do we get? It's quite hard to hit that voice. Oh, I got hit with the sword. I didn't realise you could get killed with the sword. Um, I have seen a speedrunning trick when you get to him and he's asleep. I'm not sure exactly how you trick, how you do that, how you work. There maybe it's timing based or something. And uh, you can just walk into him, push him, and push him off the edge and win. You can also, once an enemy is dead, you can jump off the edge and you can still win. Right, we won't be far off to the point where I get stuck in this game at the moment. Unless I'm using the, uh, the rewinds to get through it. I got quite far into it, I got way past this bit, but um, so I haven't managed to get the, uh, the clear yet. you got to be really precise for your jumping on this game, and your jumping heights. Found if you do that, kill all the enemies. Oh, should I go back there? I think. Oh, okay. I'm not sure exactly what these, these power-ups exactly do. Right, these enemies coming up uh, by here in a minute, you can't jump on their heads. They do like an electric thing if you try killing them. So you got to jump over them. Right, this is a bit that I find quite tricky. Here it is. So I'm, I'm going to use a rewind. I'm going to go back to the start. This is, I suppose this is the good thing about the rewind is... Uh, can quite easily sort of uh, work this game out. I can't, I tell you what, I do not know how to do this bit. At what speed the speedrunners do, and they get hit anyway in this bit. See, I just die. Unless I'm really lucky on this bit, I end up dying on it every time. Let's try again. It's that end bit to you. I need, I need to be able to get over this end bit without actually uh, getting hit. I don't know if there's any way of getting for you without actually getting hit. <laughs> Let me try it. Okay, let's try again. Like I said, I'm not particularly very good at this game. I needed, I think, to jump over him at that point. I couldn't get the jump in. Let's try again. I know basically I walk off, jump there, wait for the fire, jump over. Try one more on the, re in the rerun and we'll just go through the voice. Right, here we go, then. let's see what happens. Yep. Dead, basically. Go on, we've got an extra life. Let's 
So without using the rewinds at the moment, I'm, this, I'm getting stuck on this bit. Especially there now. I haven't quite worked it out how to get through this bit without actually uh, getting hit. There must be... Well, I've looked, watched the speedrunners do, and they just they just tank the damage to it, basically. And they obviously do it better than I do. Oh, okay, we might be able to get through here now if we're lucky. Yay! No! <laughs> died straight away. Ah... Uh, Okay, I wonder if we continue from where I was. No. So if I rewind back. So, this is uh, an extra bit. It's a good point, you can jump on the enemies, because uh, I would just die there anyways. Ah, dead. But anyway, there's quite, a, there's quite a bit of a game to go past in this bit. So, um, gimmick. Like I said, guys, I, I I I never had this game as a kid. I, I never played it, and probably until a few years ago, I, I was watching Aquas uh, stream it for ages. He's really good at it, by the way. If you want to, if you want to see someone who's very good at this game, look up Aquas on um, YouTube or um, Twitch. Um, he's very good at this. So I never really got into this as a kid, and uh, never learned to play it. Oh, one other thing I, I will need to mention, actually, um, you may have probably noticed it. But when you when you move it because of uh, the pixels, you get shimmering. They they could uh, they could do with some um, interpolation or something to stop the shimmer, shimmering added. So this is probably running in an emulator as such. So yeah, there is a bit of sh shimmering. It doesn't matter if you go back to the um, the smaller view, the more so the aspect ratio one. You still get the shimmering in the game. Like you don't tend to notice it while you're actually playing it, but. It is there, and it is a little bit distracting, in some ways. But anyway, so like what I was saying is, I never really got around to playing this as a kid. But it is a really cool game, and I do, I, I do like it. I, I need to play a bit more and get better at it, because at the moment I suck at it. So um, I definitely need more practice. Uh, input lag-wise, I would say, like if I'm, um, if I'm tapping the button, it seems pretty decent to be honest it, it seems like a really nice port when it comes to input like it, it's not done by city connection even though i think they their name is on you but it's done by bitwave uh city connection um as far as i'm aware they, they own the license to it i could be wrong in that mind but yeah the input wise it it seems quite really responsive so i would say there's probably like two two frames of in input delay on you maybe three but i i can't test it to you know definitely let you know if you're going to put V-Sync on, you're probably going to get an extra frame. But it seems pretty pretty legit with the um, with the input latency and jumping and things like that. It seems quite easy to do it. It's not like I'm lagging behind and I'm thinking, oh, no, I didn't jump when I wanted to jump, you know? The more I play, the better I'm getting at it. So, input latency is pretty decent. I said the music does sound like the NES one. It's a little bit of a shame that... It, doesn't have a button config and it's got square pixels it would have been nice maybe to stretch it out to more like a 4.3 sort of uh, looks out of the perfect square but you know I, I can understand why they did that um scan lines oh, this game would look so much nicer with scan lines and i think you could do with like a bit of uh, interpolation uh, added or interpolation whichever way you want to say it added to this just to just to you know smooth out the, those um the slight shimmering you get but like I say i will say about the shimmering it's it's not too bad it's not it's not as bad as anyways putting a, a nes on a bloody aerial connection and playing and looking at the shimmering the same with over a bloody av connections it's much better than that so there is that um as i say the game is is quite tricky um you have definitely got a Keep playing this game because you've got to get used to the way the um, mechanics work and the way the momentum works and yeah and everything so it, it's it's not like a mario game and you just pick it up and you, you're fine it, it is momentum based so it's a little bit different playing uh, but it does play nice actually i, I can i can see why speedrunners run this because i can once you get really good at it and you start getting really fast at it and you start doing the tricks with the star like i've seen a trick by you where basically he uses the star and then um, I don't know. Uses the star, 
and he jumps on this and then does like a, a jump over here and bounces straight over. So he doesn't even he doesn't even wait for that to turn up. So he just jumps basically straight over. I don't know how he does it, he like taps it and off he goes. So I suppose it's just playing there and playing there and getting good at it and uh, learning how all this stuff works basically. Same as you as well, they don't even like I, I tend to go up here and just bounce the star off because it works. But they, they just ride the star over and they, they don't even go up up there, they ended up going up in the middle of the screen and then end up on the level. Like if I want to go across there, which is, is a bit tricky, until you've... Uh, I can't do it from that way anyway, by the look of it. <laughs> See what I mean? Because it's got a little bit... Once you let go of it, it's got that uh, a little bit of extra movement going on. So you have literally just got to get used to it. So it's, a lot of it is practicing the screens. So yeah, so Gimmick is a really nice game. Um, I'm not going to rate it out of 10, basically, because I don't feel that I've played it enough. I haven't played it for like 20, 30 hours to get really good at it, to, to you know, to really give it a good score. But I would definitely say it's recommended, and it, it, it does seem a really decent version. I have heard that the Switch version does have a few extra frames of imp input delay, so maybe... Maybe a little bit of caution on the um, Switch version. I don't know whether there's a demo out there. Uh, I haven't played it myself, so I don't know. It might be perfect to Switch, all I know. It's just what I, I've heard a few people saying. Um, but yeah, input lag on the PC version seems particularly fine, to be honest. It's, it's all right. Just like playing in a decent emulator, basically. As you can see, I'm, I'm tapping the button. And it, it's basically firing. I don't know whether you can hear that, so it's like... I could probably uh, figure out what the input to date by the sound of that, to be honest. But yeah, so I would say definitely recommended. It's really good um, and well worth picking up, I would say. Like, So um, hope you enjoy that. And uh, yeah, if you've got a PC, pick it up. So have a look at the Switch version and see what you think. And I'm not sure if it's out on the PS4. It might be as well. But anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed uh, this review and this uh, terrible gameplay. And um, I shall catch you soon. Catch you around. Bye-bye.